Greetings out there in YouTube land. This is Morris Man, and as always, I thank you guys for coming to my channel. Today I'm going to do something different and unique, and I might start to do a series of these where, because you know, as you know, I do a, I analyze artists, and now I'm going to sometimes analyze songs because there's some songs that really need to be, I guess, uh, acknowledged as far as their chord progressions and how clever they are either lyrically or chord wise or just arrangement wise and recently I did uh, two tabs uh, from a good friend Andre and uh, Andre's been uh, well, a supporter of my channel for a long time and I actually, actually met Andre last year so it was, it was nice to meet some of you know, my subscribers so Andre requested that I do two spinner songs Mighty Love and the other one is called and actually, they just can't stop it. But most of us know that song by the games people play. Because some songs have these real long titles, you know, and this is one of them. And so I immediately got to work on it. And what I do is, again, like I said, I do a breakdown. Because, you know, uh, we emphasize as far as key signatures and all that stuff. But what's even more important than that is knowing structure of song. When someone asks you to uh, get to the, the chord section, the chord section, you know what it is. Because uh, from time to time, I teach uh, small children drums, you know, because I'm not the best drummer. But I can teach them the basics as far as, you know, the pedal foot and hi-hat and all that. And what I do is this, and it's very unique and uh even some of the drummers that really actually play, they say, man, that's a good idea. And I'm going to incorporate that into my instructions or how I instruct people. I tell I tell the people that uh, I'm working with drum wise. I said, uh, before I even want you to sit on that drum throne and start, you know, welling with the sticks. I want you to be able to distinguish uh, the changes in songs, meaning that uh, can you identify the verses? Can you can you identify the chorus? Can you identify the B section? Can you identify uh, modulation, changing of key, you know, going up, going down. So when you learn that first, it's real easy to become a drummer because it's really important for a drummer to be able to distinguish the, the well, the, it's going out of the uh, verses right into the chorus. And that's signified by a drum roll or a crash, you know. So it's the same thing with guitar players, but most of us don't think like that. And the reason why I think like that because, uh, you know, throughout the years, I've played a little bit of everything. I actually started off as a trumpet player, and from time to time, I still play that, but it gives me a headache when I play it, so I, I don't play it that much. But And also learning the lyrics for the vocalist, because I'm like, the most terrifying thing to me as a musician is being up on stage and fucking up. I don't want nobody to be looking at me, that guy just messed up. I want to be the guy in the background just blending in with the rest of the guys and doing my job and getting the job done. So I was really attention to detail when it came to that, because I do not like messing up. So I would learn not only my guitar part, I would also learn uh, the lyrics, you know, because the lyrics guide you throughout the structure of the song, you know. So uh, that's what I do, you know, uh, when I attack, uh, uh, tackle these uh, spinner songs, I broke it down because, you know, the games people play, uh, this is the structure. There's an intro and the chords in the intro is A and then there's like a extra added note. I call it A add nine, but I don't think it's that. And uh, B minor 7, then B11. Then the, the verse, because there's three parts. It's the intro, verse, then there's like a sub verse, and then there's the chord. So again, uh, the, the intro is A, then I add a note. I, I, like I said, I call it A mi at 9, but it's not that. Uh, B minor 7, B11. Uh, the verse goes like this. There's A, then there's B minor 7, A major 7, then B major, B minor 7. And then it goes into uh, what it says, I walk around. And uh, that part is D major 7, C sharp minor 7, F sharp minor 9. And before I finish what I'm about to say, I want to just say this. Uh, that particular song and the other spinner song is on my other channel. So there's a link down there you can click to it. And it has the chords throughout you know, the, the video. So then there's like, a, there's like actually... After, you know, where it says I walk around the D major 7, C sharp minor 7, F sharp minor 9. And I love that F sharp minor 9 as far as it's an accent. Uh, then there's like another part that I call other section because I dissect them by chord progression and sequence. So there's another sequence. That other sequence is this. And I'm actually going to uh, insert uh, a quick demonstration of me playing it on guitar because this is really clever. Uh, 
you know, throughout the years when you play, you kind of stack notes as like uh, old school would say, old school Larry would say, or old school funk. And uh, it's kind of clever that I've never heard this in a song before. And I used to do it all the time because it, it impresses people when you go from major to minor to major to minor and you go up the, the neck. And on this particular song, uh, it goes like this, E major 7. D sharp minor seven, then D major seven, then C sharp minor seven, then C major seven, then B minor seven, and then the second time around it ends on a D. So uh, you know, I'm like I said, I'm gonna give you I uh, insert a uh, demo rack quick so you can hear what I'm talking about because it's really sweet how they done it and how they laid the a melody on top of these chord stacking progressions is going up the neck. <laughs> Then the chorus is G major 7, B minor, A minor 7. And then it does that again. Uh, well, actually, the sequence is G major 7, B minor 7, A minor 7, G major 7, B minor on two counts, and then D11. And then on the second time around, uh, they ended off with the E suspended fourth uh, slash E seventh chord. And the reason why I'm doing this video is because of this. Uh, as you guys know that I have DVDs for sale, one through six, and I'll walk you through on how to become a pretty good rhythm guitar player. And the chart that's included in this is just, you know, this is like the holy grail of guitar chords. If you just learn these two inversions, you can play 90% of the stuff off the radio. And my DVDs are almost over six hours long, and I walk you through stuff that most guitar players or instructors don't even think about. It's like, whoa. You know, I didn't even think about including that because as a learner myself many years ago, I would ask questions and my questions weren't answered. A lot of the things they had me doing made no sense to me. And I'm like, how do I get the music land where I can play this stuff off the radio? That's all I'm concerned about. And still a building chords and all that. Because that's wonderful if you're trying to get into song scores and doing major serious tabulations and classical stuff. But if you're just a regular person that either got a 9 to 5 and just want to play on the weekend with your buddies in the bar, you know, this is the route you want to take. Uh, you know, you can also become a pretty good professional musician because that's what I am and I can show you how to do that. But all the things that you've been told that you need to do or be instructed to do, a lot of that stuff is just fluff, stuff you would never use. And what I did is I replaced all that fluff and I replaced it with stuff that you're going to use. You can't get around the stuff that I'm teaching you. Uh, you can't, you know, so... Uh, I went through trial and error and I decided to put together a comprehensive learning program because I kept getting a lot of people asking me, man, you play pretty good, you know, show us how you do what you do. And for a while I was like, I'm not a teacher and I'm stressed that I'm still not a teacher, but I can pass on the information and knowledge that I have so you can play like me because my channel speaks for itself, both of them. You know, I'm playing everything from Kansas, Dust in the Wind to, you know, the Commodores, Confunction, Willie Nelson, Johnny Cash. I mean... Once you start to learn what you need to learn, you can able to look at these different styles of music and play them well. Not just a dabble or just barely hanging in there, you know, because you can determine people that uh, they shouldn't be playing funk because they playing they a rock head. And ain't nothing wrong with playing different styles. But if you haven't grasped the concept and the flow and the feel of a certain style of music, maybe you ought to back off, you know, because, again, I don't bite off anything that I can't chew. Uh, I don't really I don't do gospel is because I was not raised to play gospel. Gospel is a different animal. Uh, it's nothing that it's not that I got anything against gospel. I love all types of music, but that's not my style. So I'm not trying to dabble in waters that I shouldn't be in and not good at doing because gospel is extremely busy to me. It's a lot of different chord progressions, uh, tempo changes, key signature changes, like it's just too much, you know, and uh, they showing their stuff. And, and, I, and I love to see musicians that are that sharp and that good do their thing. But uh, that's just not my thing. And it's just no disrespect to it, but it's just not my thing, you know. But, uh, you know, my DVDs are $35, which is a heck of a deal because when I really started selling my DVDs, they were $10 a piece. And they're close to an hour in each DVD. So that's well worth you know 10 bucks 
and they, so they was like 60 bucks. So I sliced it almost in half to say, you know what? I'm just trying to get these out here so people can play the guitar the right way. And still of this new age internet thing where people were just watching your fingers and trying to mimic what you're doing, but don't know why they're doing what they're doing other than watching you. I want to eliminate that. I want you guys to be able to say, hey, Morris Man taught me how to play these chords and I can play all these songs. Because it's great to do a play along with songs during the eras of the 40s, 50s, 60s, and 70s. And the 80s is kind of touch and go. But around the 80s is when things kind of change. Uh, the style changed. The way the musicians play changed. Because back in the 70s, when you played and messed up, you started over. So like now you can play a part. If you mess up, they can go in and cut a piece of it off and cut and paste it and move it all around. I'm like, no, that's not going to make you a good guitar player or a, or a good musician in general. It's just going to make you a dabbler because you, you have to be forced to work. You know, you got to put the time in and say, hey, I, I keep messing up, but I'm going to stick with it and just keep playing and keep playing and keep practicing and keep practicing and keep practicing and keep practicing until I get it right. And trust me, if you go that route, you will get it right as opposed to uh you only playing one or two chords back and forth, and if you mess up, they can cut and paste it in the mix. You know, it's not that's not really uh, to your benefit. You know, so uh, you know this chart here, like I said, that comes with the uh, with the DVDs. All the chords that I teach you in these six DVDs, and I give you kind of some theory around the chords and how you can identify them quickly. It's the same chords in this song, every one of them. You know, so. Once you learn these chords, you can take this information and do a play along because play alongs are really important because you get an idea of how writers write and their range by playing their stuff and knowing the chords already. Then you could you're on your way, well on your way to becoming a writer yourself because that's how I learned how to write by watching and studying and playing along. And I'm like, okay, they're using these chords and you know the the major seven is real hot in R&B ballad songs. I don't think there's not one R&B ballad song that don't have a major seven chord in it you know so that's a chord that you really need to learn and you learn a lot from hanging around other people that play because each person brings something different to the table and you kind of swap and trade because uh when i started playing with one of my keyboard players you know the major seven chord that i used to play a lot was the one that's based on the a string it's real easy to grip and it sounds good but the problem with that is there might be a major seven chord in this particular song that is way down here. So it's too bright. So it's like, OK, I have to uh, find the inversion on the A string to bring it up to, to match up the tones. So, uh, you know, my keyboard player taught me, you know, the one that's built on the on the E string. And that's that was so helpful to my playing. You know, because you always are going to use major seven chords in R&B songs. You can't get around it. And, and the minor sevens, too. The major chords are not used as much in the R&B songs because of, they have a different tonality. It's kind of like a dark or a poppy sound. But when you play that major seven, you know, boom, it's there. Play that minor seven, you know, it's there as opposed to, you know, that's a major chord. So uh, it's good to know them all. But, you know, in my DVDs, I kind of walk you through when to use them and how to use them because uh, this is something I just want to mention, too. I'm working on with some keyboard players to put together a comprehensive keyboard lesson plan like the guitar because my concept as far as my DVD lessons, I walk you through how to play guitar and it's not that difficult because you're using a lot of bar chords. And the difference between piano and guitar is a good example. Again, here's the C major 7, right on the A string. Now, if I want to play a C sharp major seven, I just slide everything down. I ain't got to move, configure my fingers. I just slide it down. I ain't got to do nothing, move it down. I don't change the grip. But with piano, if you're playing a C major seven and then a C sharp major seven is the next chord, it's not, you don't do that. You got to do some reconfigurations. So I'm working on with some keyboard players to kind of put together kind of like a Scott Houston, the piano guy, piano chord. So it's easier and, and it's cutting through the chase. That'd be a while down down the, down the pike. But I'm going to wrap this video up again. Uh, I got DVDs for sale. You get six DVDs close to close to five and a half hours of me walking you through what you need to know and how you can get to the point where you can play thousands of songs because that's what I want you guys to do. I don't want to teach you a song. I want to teach you how to play your guitar so you can play hundreds of songs. The only time, like with my videos, uh, 
you know, the videos are geared towards people that can already play, you know, because people, a lot of people get this misconception of, oh, you're trying to, you're not teaching me well in these videos. I'm not trying to teach you to play your guitar. That would take a long length of time, and I can't do that in a six-minute song. What I'm doing is showing guitar players or, or keyboard players how to play these chords. They already know how to, they already know how to play chords. They just don't know how to play the specific chords in these specific songs. And I get a lot of people that kind of get, uh, miss, uh, uh, I guess confused because they think that I'm trying to teach them how to play their guitar in this song. No, uh, I can do that with the DVDs, but the, the DVD, the covers that I do are geared towards again, people that can play. They just don't know the chords to the song. So I give them that and they're like, okay, we good. Thanks. You know? So uh, again, if you guys are interested, you know, to play the guitar the right way, you know, the DVDs are still $35 at some point in time, in the next couple of months, they might go up because of uh, all of the, the, the supplies that went up. Uh, you know, the DVD, the cost of the blank DVDs, the mailers, the postage, uh, the other supplies, you know, so uh, the, 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 the increase will reflect or, or reflect, uh, you know, the, 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 the price of things going up because uh you know, everything goes up and you have to kind of raise your price to reflect that in, that uh, increase. But uh, this is an opportunity that you guys don't want to miss because, uh, again, you know, I've been playing for like 27 years professionally, uh, writing, you know, arranging, producing, engineering, you know, you name it, I've done it. And uh, I'm trying to give you guys some straight to the point insight on how to play the guitar instead of fumbling around with other uh, programs that claim that they can do this. And all they're doing is giving you bits and pieces and all the bits and pieces are not connecting. But with my program, because uh, I've had a lot of people tell me, man, ever since I got what you've given me, uh, I'm playing. You know, and uh, now I've, you've helped me unlock the, the mystery of this is how it's done. And I'm no longer guessing. I know exactly what I'm doing. As opposed to, uh, well, most man told me to put my finger there and put my finger up there and put my finger there and strum it. No, I'm teaching you the right way and teaching you what you need to know and, and what you knowing as far as, you know, uh, I know what I'm doing. You know, so if you guys are interested, uh, send me information uh, or inquiry or comment and I will send you my PayPal information. Once payment is received, DVD gives DVDs go out the very next day and also for you international still $45 so uh, if you guys are interested in playing guitar and playing it well and playing it the right way you came to the right place till next time take care thanks for watching